Hey everyone, my name is Michael McCarver. This is Fun with Fallen Flags, episode 65. This is the Vance Junction series. Uh, we're continuing on building out the structures of Vance Junction. And this is going to be the fourth of four structures that are in the Bantam Model Works kit. These are the outbuildings. We did the section house on the last episode, and before that, we did the other three that are in this kit. So this is HO kit. BMW-135 and again this is HO scale so if the parts or instructions look slightly different on some of the other gauges then I would expect that. I want to thank uh, Bantam Auto Works for allowing me to feature their kits as we go through this uh, walkthrough. Uh, uh, occasionally I'll refer to prototype photos and I want to thank the uh, guys at um, the Friends of Cumbress and Toltec for allowing me to use some of their photos as well. Um, I do use them with permission, so just in case uh, anybody has any questions about that. Um, but I think it's important to view the actual structure of the kit that we're trying to make in the historical context. Um, as far as historical context, for this car, this is a, uh, it's a coach but it's actually the depot. So it was involved in an accident. It was Rio Grande Southern uh, coach number 254. It was salvaged. Before that, it was a Denver and Rio Grande um, coach 263. So the Rio Grande Southern um, uh, renumbered it, and then it was uh, salvaged. I believe it was in a wreck. Uh, I believe I read that, but I not sure if that's uh, accurate or not. So let's just say it was salvaged. Um, it was salvaged and placed in, if you look at the top photo, you can see that we've already done the RPO baggage car, which is half of it's on the uh, cutoff, but it's on the left. Then the uh, standard gauge box car, then the section house, which we did in the last episode. And then you can see in the far right is where this one is placed. Um, there's two photos up. One of them is a picture of this uh, coach about 1910. So you can tell it's been there for quite a long time. And then after it was the road, the uh, uh, junction was abandoned, uh, section house was torn down, they stripped out the center, the interior of the coach, and um, it's basically just the outside shell. And that's what it looked like in 1964. So we're going to go somewhere in between. Um, the the uh, picture on the left that has the four windows on the side, that was up until like the early 40s. Um, and then once it started really getting closer to, uh, you know, the end of the Rio Grande Southern, uh, it lost that, um, that look where it was basically uh, paneled and it started to look just like a regular coach did. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and restore it to its 1910 glory. I want this to look a little more aged. Uh, and everybody's familiar with looking at this structure um, in kind of the uh, lower right, 1964 uh, vintage. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build this out as kind of a 1964 picture, similar to that, but we're going to make it look a lot nicer. So we're going to assume that it's gotten a little bit of recent paint job, um, but it's still going to get heavily weathered. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, uh, join the Facebook uh, HO Scale Tutorials group, any of that information, uh, even the, the paints that I'm using and that type of stuff, I'm going to put a lot of notes in the body of this. So refer to that. We won't go through that. We've kind of gone through that uh, uh, on a couple of videos anyway. Um, but this is number seven. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, let's go through the parts. Okay, so let's go through the parts um, real quick. So uh, instructions on the left, uh, there's mostly it's pictures. Uh, there's not a lot to this kit. You can see the parts on the right. There's not a whole lot of them. Um, and then the uh, bag of uh, dimensional lumber and acetate window material. Uh, there is the thin veneer piece on the top in the center, and that just affixes to the inner walls. Uh, trim piece below that, the center piece, the third one down, that's the flooring. The fourth one down, those are the inner walls. It's a lot, builds a lot like the section house did in the last episode. Uh, 
inner walls, thick, strong inner walls, and then thin veneers go over the outside of it. Then the, um, the 3D printed roof, just a note that if you buy an older kit from the 90s, you know, new old stock, um, and uh, somebody's clearing out their inventory, a relative, or, uh, you know, a, a, a train store or hobby shop is going out of business or decides they don't want to sell stuff anymore, and they're, they're clearing stuff out, and they don't care what they get for it, and they just clear it out. Um, older kits like this, they have resin cast roofs, so uh, they are not nearly as uh, clean as the 3D printed ones or accurate. And this one actually has kind of bowed a little bit. So just be aware of that. Uh, it, it can be an issue. Uh, this one is nice and straight, and the castings are very crisp. I don't have to do any cleanup at all on this. There's a few places where it looks like the 3D printer um, just had a couple of exit points and uh, just, a, just a quick hit with a file, and uh, that's going to clean up. But that's all I got to do. That resin um, roof. I'd be working on that thing for hours to make it look good. I'd probably abandon it and try to get a piece of uh, milled wood or something and, and try to get it to fit. But this 3D print, benefit to going out and getting the latest and greatest. Now, that other kit, that could have been produced by a, a owner or two ago. And this is the latest version of newer technology. And uh, some of these kits go through a couple of different owners you know, they sell their company and um, you don't really know what you're getting if you get it going back 10, 20, 30 years. So it does pay a little bit to kind of get the latest one. So I definitely found that out in this kit. So anyway, off my soapbox. So let's talk about next steps. So next step we're going to go and we're going to turn this uh, bunch of parts into the beginning of the depot. Uh, this was actually a depot telegraph office and coach and uh, uh, storage area for the the agent. It wasn't the large building to the left, the section house. It was actually this building. So this is the uh, this is actually the depot. There was talk that they're going to put a depot further south, down the track a little ways from this, but they, it never got built, and it seemed like an odd place because this is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. There's not really any uh, houses or anything. There's a little grouping a little further south, but this is pretty far away from any of the major uh, communities. Uh, Telluride is up over the hill from this, and they have their own station. So anyway, now for the history lesson. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the, the pieces together uh, going down the from the top to bottom, the uh, one, two, third, and fourth panels. I'm going to break all those pieces out. I'm going to glue them all together make them nice and solid. Uh, I'll probably brace the walls so that they don't bow in a little bit towards the top. And um, then we'll go ahead and take a look at that construction, of how it looks and where we're at. Okay, so we've got the inner walls built and we're gonna skin those with some additional pieces. We need to paint those first. And uh, in the upper right hand corner of that uh, uh, parts diagram, there was a panel that had three uh, rectangles in it. Those are actually the braces and it didn't really say anything in the instructions that I came across. So those are going to get added as well. And once those are added, it should look like this. And uh, we're viewing it from the top down. So we're looking inside the car. And you can see I've even added a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and India ink. I do one part India ink to uh, about nine parts isopropyl alcohol. It's 91% isopropyl alcohol that I'm using, and it gives it that real good weathered look. And you can see I've even actually applied it on the inside, even though it's not going to be seen. Uh, if anybody looks through a window, they're going to see that it's a darkened interior color, so it's not going to look like bare, unfinished wood from the kit. So, anyway, so the uh, kit walls, the inners are done. I've got it braced and I've actually glued the interior quite a bit um, as far as reinforcing it. Now on the right side where the door is, there's a panel that slips down behind that so you get a contrast of yellow and brown. So you don't want to 
reinforce those corners too heavily because otherwise that piece isn't going to snug up against the back of the door. So uh, just something to watch out for. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on and we're going to start uh, working on the outside of the structure now. Okay, so the outside of the structure is essentially brown on the bottom, yellow on the top. Uh, what you're going to see is there's going to be two long panel pieces that go up the side of the coach that you can see here that I've painted and weathered. And then there's going to be two small square pieces that go on the doorway end. On this end is just a blank wall. And you can see it's a full height panel. So we'll want to paint that brown and then get a nice crisp line and then uh, yellow on the top. All the top is going to be yellow and we're going to fade that with a wash with a white colored wash just to tone down the yellow because of the new yellow for the Rio Grande Southern uh, Depot color that I'm using is uh, fairly bright and vivid and we want to tone that down. Uh, all the wood that we're going to use is going to get an India ink and uh, isopropyl alcohol wash. And you can see the difference between the uh, top piece on the end that's gotten the, the wash and then the brown on the bottom so that when you scrape away the paint and uh, you want to do it with a really light touch just kind of practice on a piece of scrap material at first so what you end up with is the brown paint peeling off but it's not brand new lumberyard pine color underneath it's a faded um, weathered look of wood that you start to expose. So it looks really nice when you're done. And you can see that I've done it on the end and I've done it all the way down both sides of the coach and um, we're ready to uh, start the yellow. However, <laughs> as I was doing some research, in one of the Rio Grande Southern books, there was a note on a drawing from Mike Blazek that the cross rods, the truss rods, are, are still in place on the car when it was uh, salvaged and and parked here. So the wheels are gone, but the bracing underneath for support of the floor, that's in place. And uh, so all I did was I used a piece of brass wire and that casting there in the center, and then two pieces of material, dimensional lumber. I think I used four by six on that. Uh, I just used what I thought looked accurate, and I had pulled a Blackstone passenger car out to see what I what it looked like and what I liked. So anyway, um, that's in place, and that's going to look nice when we start to put the uh, the bracing underneath it, the footers for uh, this side of the slope, where it's where it's up probably eight feet, and on the track side it's flush with the track. So you'll get that slope, just like all the other kits that we've already built and uh, put in place with that real two-dimensional, th sorry, three-dimensional uh, appearance on one side. So this, all these structures on the track side are all on a very, uh, probably 45 degree slope. So anyway, so now that that's done and you can get a really good look at the weathering on this side and all that really is is an India ink wash and then just going at it very tenderly with an exacto blade and uh, just practice all the way down the side so the entire bottom half has been assembled and weathered painted and weathered and you get this look and then those two big red things that are on there just above the uh, the trim board those are actually clamps and I was using that to space the uh, the trim board in place and you can see that the uh, trim board is being attached and I'm clamping that on while the uh, glue dries. I use that uh, mostly for uh, clamping it and also for spacing it to get the right height on it too. So that's done. Next up is the top half of the structure and we're gonna go do yellow and a white wash on it to dull that down. All right, so the yellow pieces have been painted and then dulled down with a just a little wash of a white color and that takes a little bit of the brightness so it doesn't quite look like a school bus <laughs> anymore so the, <coughs> excuse me this side has been painted and now it's been glued and clamped down and let me show you kind of what it looks like as I go through each of the steps uh, for gluing 
And those are the clamps that I use. I have big binder clips. I have uh, small, tiny ones. Uh, I have these fancy ones. Um, I just happen to use whatever fits into the space and gets me the right amount of distribution. And sometimes I'll take a toothpick or just a piece of scrap wood and I'll put it along the surface that I want to clamp. Not so much to worry about any kind of depressions that the clamp might make, but to uh, distribute that force evenly along that piece while it glues, while the, the glue dries. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and finish putting all of the yellow pieces back on, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so this is what the end looks like with the most amount of detail. Um, the Let's see, it's got an uh, interior layer of yellow, and then the the actual body of it has been painted brown. That's where you get the brown for the door. Then the two square panels on either side of the door and the yellow, separate yellow piece that goes over the top and then a smaller yellow piece that just is, covers the arch. And then the two trim boards. And then I trimmed out the corners with the brown pieces that you can see here. Uh, it's supposed to be a half round piece on that corner, or sorry, a quarter round piece on those corners, but uh, the material that I have is uh, a little bit bigger than that, and I needed to cover up the edges of the, uh, the, the sides of the coach. The top piece kind of uh, hung out a little bit, so that wasn't going to work. So anyway, I've got it all trimmed up and I've test fit the roof on it. So now we're going to go ahead and start working on the roof. Okay, so for the roof, all I really did was mask off. Uh, I painted the base coat yellow and then faded it white. Did all the yellow at the same time. So this was getting painted at the same time as the rest of the body was. And then once I got the yellow in place, um, I masked off these little fine edges and um, up here in this this recessed area where the uh, smaller windows sit. So that got masked off and then I painted it a, a base gray color and we're going to weather this with a little bit of uh, wash with some India ink just to tone it down and give it a little bit of variety and then I'm going to use uh, weathering powders, chalk, uh, with layers of dull coat after each application and then we'll bring out some of the detail uh, and it's pretty much just stain. Now some of the pictures that we that in the very beginning that I showed showed the roof was in pretty horrible shape. There's actually metal pieces along here that were sheathed on top of it and those were all peeling back and you could see some of the wood exposed. Um, we could certainly do that. It's going to be a lot of work. I'm just going to weather this instead and just keep it simple. And uh, one other thing is on the underside here, I painted a little bit of brown right here on this lip, just the same trim brown color. I don't know that you're actually ever going to see it unless you're doing a run by and you happen to go by or you happen to be looking down underneath the structure. You'll notice it then but it just seemed like an easy thing to do and it tied all of the brown trim pieces together. But other than that, it's basically just two tones, a yellow and a grayish color. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and weather this just to do a little bit of India ink real light and then we're gonna start doing some chalk powders. So the color that we're going for is a really uh, badly rusted roof on top of the base color of the um, the the gray and we want some of it to kind of wash down off the sides too to discolor some of the yellow because this this roof is in actually really bad shape and we kind of want to reflect that but we're going to do it mostly with just weathering powders so let me go ahead and do that and we'll take a look and see how it turns out okay so that's the result of just applying chalk powders so I decided not to do any kind of wash or anything on top of that I would lay a, put a layer of um, chalk powders down and spray it with dull coat and then I would do it in each of the colors. So I started with black to darken the roof in general and also to kind of burnish back and forth. You can see a lot of the lines 
and those are just the creases of the uh, the uh, the 3D printed uh, rooftop. So you can kind of it brings that out too, so you can actually look like it's got layers of uh, um, metal sheathing on it, and then a couple of layers of uh, that, and a couple layers of the rust effect, and you can see some of those are uh, moving down, you know, streaming down the sides of the roof on either side, and then on the ends. Uh, and they did a little bit of yellow highlighting along the where the uh, small windows are. Uh, in that opening so but that's it really simple couple layers take it slow and that's what we end up with and we're gonna go ahead and uh, glue that on but we're, next we're gonna work on the supports on the uh, non track side the side that slopes down the hill okay so what we have here is a India ink wash on the supports on the legs and I also added a little support on the back side here too and it shows up a little bit better there all that do does is it just allows me to stand this up so it doesn't keep falling over while I'm working on it and also um, I may leave that on I'll probably take it off when this actually gets inserted into the layout the legs are going to insert down into holes into the layout and same process as we did with the uh, what was it, the box car, just simple legs, and uh, I put a little stand on that one too. The uh, angle braces match uh, some of the photos that are on the Friends of the Cumbers and Teletech website, and other than that, uh, that's essentially uh, all it takes to do that any ink wash, just like we did with the deck. So um, that's done. What we have left to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue the roof on and I'm going to build the railing around the uh, the porch here that right outside that door and it's uh, very simple and uh, we'll take a look at it after those steps are done and that should be it. Okay that's it for the project. We got the roof on, we got the railing put on and that's it. Uh, this is the side that's down slope and let me pull up the track side shot although I like this shot better. <laughs> this is the shot that you would see if you were going by in a uh, uh, galloping goose or something like that. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to put notes below for all the links and everything we talked about. The uh, information that uh, you may want as far as finding the YouTube channel, the Facebook group, and any of the other like the manufacturer's website and then the uh, photos once again I want to thank uh, Bantam Model Works for allowing me to feature a kit and um, also the friends of the Cumbersome Toltec for allowing me to use the prototype photos that we've used um, after this it's a coaling pocket and uh, laying down some track and um, those are going to be big projects, so I'll probably break those up in a little bit so that we can get it uh, digested. But I would appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to uh, click the bell icon after you subscribe so you get updates. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.